you have to confront those things to make it make sense. Now that I know why, how can I put a stop to this? Hey y'all, what's up? Welcome back to Trish TV, Trish Talk. And today we have another good topic. Three reasons why you keep attracting toxic relationships. Nobody better to talk about this topic than me. I do hope that this video gives you insight on your own situation if you're currently going through this. And if you wanna put a stop to it, I'm gonna share these three most common things with you. But of course, before we get into the video, don't forget to like, comment if you like, and subscribe before you leave today. Let's get right into this topic. So I am gonna be looking down at my computer. Don't wanna get off topic just to make sure I say everything and stay on topic so hopefully y'all can roll with me so as i was researching this topic i really wanted to make sure that i outlined the three most common reasons and i came up on this syndrome the florence nightingale syndrome i've never heard of that before the florence nightingale syndrome is when caregivers fall in love with their patients after they fall in love once the patient is no longer in need of their care the feeling fades. So when I heard this, I instantly said, okay, I get it. She's a fixer. You are attracted to people who have a lot of drama. You like to feel like you can add something of value. It makes you feel good to know that you can help somebody. People are not projects. You should never get with someone for the sole purpose of trying to fix them. You have low self-esteem. You basically do not feel that you are worthy. So you accept the bare minimum. It's easy to be taken advantage of. She allows space and room for toxic relationships. If you want a good man, you deserve a good man. The difference between the girl who has high self-esteem, not necessarily meaning that she's cocky or that she thinks she's better than anybody else. She knows her worth. She believes in herself. She believes that she de deserves the best. She treats herself with the utmost respect. So she expects the same thing from whoever she's dating. I believe no matter how good of a woman you are or good of a man you are, you're gonna attract different type of people. But the difference between someone who has high self-esteem and someone who has low self-esteem is what they will and will not allow into their space. This woman who's confident and has high self-esteem, she blocks it, she won't allow it. It. Whereas the girl who has low self-esteem doesn't think much about herself, she'll talk herself into it like, hmm, maybe it's not that bad. We'll see where this goes. Let's see if the potential of this person will show up. Let's see if I can somehow influence him to want to change. The second reason why you are attracted to toxic relationships is because you've grown kind of numb to it. You're used to it. Most of the relationships you've had were full of drama and toxicity. This is what I'm the most comfortable with. I don't like it. It makes me feel terrible, but I'm used to this. I feel like a lot of things that we feel and that we go through has a lot to do with our patterns. You have to look at your patterns. Look at your patterns of dating and Figure out why. Why am I attracted to these types of guys? It all starts from somewhere. It's rooted somewhere as to why you put up with toxicity from these relationships that you're in. Were you raised with both parents? Did you grow up seeing your mom mistreat your dad? Your dad mistreat your mom. How did he talk to her? How did he treat her? Was there a lot of infidelity? Also looking at your friendships, all the drama they had with the men that they were with, what you surround yourself with is what you become. Did you have a great relationship with your father? They say females were always trying to find our fathers um, in our relationships to a degree. I, I might agree with that. It can be two different sides to that. And that goes to say a lot as to how we communicate or don't communicate. What were those relationships like? All these kind of questions, although they can be very uncomfortable, it is what it is. You have to reach back to kind of figure out what are the patterns? Why do I allow this? And then once you figure out the why, once you see this might be why I continue to attract these kind of relationships, I want better. I want to believe that there's better. I feel like I'm worthy of the relationship that I desire to have. But in order to make room for what I desire to have, there are some things I have to confront. You have to confront those things to make it make sense. Now that I know why, 
how can I put a stop to this? You yourself are toxic. Because you are toxic, you attract toxic relationships. It is so easy to shift blame, but how much responsibility do we really take? Am I a toxic person? Do I communicate effectively? Or do I constantly play games? Is there always conflict between you and your family? Is there always conflict between you and your friends? And think about, well, if I'm always attracting toxic relationships, what part of me also gives off that energy to say that I welcome this? Are you controlling? Do you have a controlling spirit? These are things that you really have to look internally for. A lot of the reason why I believe I attracted toxic relationships was because I was very vulnerable. So I really kind of jumped into situations and relationships to kind of ignore the healing that had to take place. So in that you kind of accept pretty much anything and you kind of find yourself in the same circle, different person, different face, but same situations. It does you a disservice and it delays whatever good might be out there for you. I know a lot of women we put up with a lot of things since the beginning of time. It's not right, it's not fair. If this is you, I do encourage you to look internally, to look within yourself. The tools are here and it's important to do the work. So if you do desire to have a healthy relationship, you wanna first work on yourself so that you can be open when the time is right to receive what you desire and what you deserve. Toxic relationships are based on conflict, competition, and the need to control. So in closing, make sure that you recognize your own toxic behavior. Make sure that you are setting clear boundaries. Do not be afraid to be alone. Is it always fun? No, but I'd rather be alone where I know that I'm gonna treat myself right and do the work that I need to do than to be with someone who is gonna constantly treat me wrong over and over and over again. Thank y'all so much for watching this video. I do hope that you enjoyed and took a few nuggets or two from this video. Feel free to share this video with your friends or someone who needs it. But however, I do believe if you're watching, it's because you needed it. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. Thank you guys for watching today's episode. Want to let you know, if you did not know, I do have a podcast called Time Out with Trish. You can listen to today's episode there via Google or Spotify. I'll have the links in the description box below. Thank y'all so much for watching and supporting.